here in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Bob Mopp along with Teddy Atlas. What a great fight to start the night. Ten rounds. Lawrence Chapman in the red coming off a 21-month layoff. Late stages of round number five. Chapman with Joneswood Rally. But Chapman had a very good tenth and final round. And decision win for the 28-year-old Chapman. He is now 16 and 0. We have Super Bantamweight for you up next. Isidro Tejador and Devin Tapa from the Zembo Temple in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Devin Tapa from Atlantic City, New Jersey by way of Nepal. 119 and a half pounds. 15 and 1 with nine knockouts. Represented China in the 1996 Olympic Games in Atlanta. He'll be taking on from Miami by way of Columbia. Isidro Teodor, 121 pounds. And he is 13, 4, and 4 with seven knockouts. His second bout in the United States prior to that. All of his bouts in Colombia, Panama, or Argentina. Steve Smoger, double S, is our referee for our next bout. Teodor fought at the Blue Horizon back in September. That was his last fight. Ready, young man? Eight round decision against Rogers McGua. He counterpunched from the corner in that fight. It could be detrimental in this fight against Tapa. We've seen Tapa here on ESPN2 several times before. Tapa Southpaw, good power. You need the hand. And an awkward style, very quick. He's very, very difficult, Tapper, to deal with his style. He's in, he's out, and he throws bombs. His only loss, a 12-round decision for the NABF Super Flyweight title. Back in February in New Jersey, lost a 12-round decision to Oscar Andre. Tapas Teddy Teodor has been knocked out three times. He came in three consecutive bouts twice in 1993 then he had a two and a half year layoff then he was knocked out in 1996 then he took another one against the 23 year old South Fort Tapa his Teodor is not going to match speed with the awkward unorthodox Tapa he has a time Tapa coming in Teodor is Good hook for the body. You see that right hand there, Mike? Mm -hmm. With Tapper. That's okay. He has to have a plan. His plan has to be able to throw at the right time. Let Tapper do some of his work for him. Theodore wants it at the right time. Tapper just kind of winging away. Tapper's a difficult style to deal with anyway. Especially in the short of fight. Top of the aggressor here in this first round, scheduled for six. Against Isidro Tejador. Top of the busier of the two in that first round, although he only landed four more punches than Tejador. Tejador more of a counter puncher. He did land a couple of rights. Bob, as I mentioned, Teodor needs, you don't need any boxing experts to tell anybody that Tapa is a difficult style, quicker than Teodor, and that Teodor would probably need to time Tapa coming in. How do you do that? You can wait for Tapa to come in, or you can create invitations. Try to get Tapa to come in. When does Tapa come in? Just watch. He comes in mostly when he sees the coast is clear. When he sees Teodor come up or Teodor go backwards. So let Teodor go backwards or fake that he's going to go backwards. Move that right foot back just like he's going to go backwards. And then stop in his tracks and catch Tapper coming in. That's a long time. Watch Tapa, even though he's throwing, he looks like he's sometimes a little out of control. He knows in his mind what he's doing. He reads 
Teodor pretty well. Watch, he'll look at Teodor. He'll see what he's not set. See, see this? As soon as he saw Teodor miss, he came in. He sees Teodor come up and go into a defensive mode. Tapper will come in. He sees Teodor move backwards. Tapper will come in. Teodor needs to mislead. Misrepresent himself to Tapper. Time to do it. You got a faster guy. Those short fights favor him. The slower, more solid guys that depend on timing, like Teodor in this case, they need more rounds, Bob. They need 10 rounds. A fan yelled out, body blow, and top of the Teodor trying to time the awkward top of the two rounds. Oh, hitting on the brakes. He's in the Grand Casino as Eric Harding steps into the ring, the East Hartford, Connecticut native, 19 one and one with six knockouts in his career and he'll be taking on demetrius jenkins you've seen him here on friday night fights before jenkins 20 and 5 with 15 knockouts harding and jenkins next friday night 9 p.m eastern for more log on to espn.com family and he squares off against the biggest test Round number three underway for Tapa and Taylor. Taylor. Speed against timing, Bob. That's what are you going to see? Walk with style here. An orthodox style, Tapa. We said that right from the top. You know that old low age commercial? How do you spell relief? How do you spell it tangled up? Very slippery. Add to the mix that you have a southpaw and tapper against the orthodox fighter in Theodore. And that can happen right. quite often. We don't like a it's going to go so easily to tapper. Even though he's the busier guy, the faster guy, the flashier guy. A lot of these punches are not landing. And Teodor can get one of the bout. Three rounds complete. See how we are underway with round number four. Coming up in the main event tonight from Harrisburg, Julian Letterlow and Toddy King. It should be a slugfest. We got a good rock and sock about between Chapman and Colored Trunks has thrown more punches than top of. Now let's see that. Constitute a knockdown. You don't have to tell that man in the ref in the ring there. That's Steve Smolder, the real good veteran referee. So even if a guy's off balance and it's more of a slip, if a punch is thrown and it does land. As I said earlier, I didn't know this was going to happen, but as I said, don't be so sure. The decision's automatic. The perception would be, I would have thought the tapper threw more punches. But as you said, I'll punch that man. And that's the great thing about having the ability to have that tool of punch that. And so I would have assumed he threw more punches. Not the case. Not in each of the last two rounds. The other thing, he's so awkward. And it's so uh, unorthodox. Door, the busier of the two. Bounds, that right hand definitely was thrown. I'm not so sure it landed, but the right call by the veteran referee, Steve Smoker. Punch was thrown. That guy went down. And he was in a great position. He made a 10 9. Each guy landed only six punches in the round. Theodore, according to CompuBox, threw four more. Fairly even round. I'd I, I, be hard pressed to make that a 10 8 round. Top of slips there. There's the sharp left wheel knocked down as far as being oh, effective oh, in hurting oh, the guy. There's a close left hand. He scored on the bouncing tap. Tap does a lot of bouncing. In and out. He did with his head a lot. So, of course, the problems for his opponent because he's so unorthodox, so unexpected in the things that he does, but of course, the problems for himself. He's out of balance, off balance and out of position so often that sometimes the punches 
that exaggerated the effect that they may have. And the judge is looking at it. I mean, Bob Teodor needs to concentrate on one thing here. Time his man coming in. Act like he's going defensive, then punch. One more round to go in this awkward bout. Rough throw, very close, and there's no doubt also the tapper was off balance. His feet were spread apart, very wide, very square. Good way to fall down. That came in round four. We're in the sixth and final round. Very difficult job for the judges here tonight in this fight. No punch, no punch. There might be a nick on the left eyebrow of Teodor, with Tapa constantly leading in with his head with that bounce place. He's not sure what he's going to do half of the time. Teddy, you have it even. I have it 49-46 for Teodor. I've given him every round but the first. You need to give two even rounds to win. Yeah. Why anyone would want to fight this guy. So there's Teodor. Oh, oh boy. Teodor got caught, and down he went. There's the power of Tapa. We talk about he is awkward. He is unorthodox, but he does have power. That was a real knockdown, and Steve Smoger stopping it. And Teodor has been knocked out three times, and now make it four. Devin Tapa. Finally timed the punch correctly on the inside. He caught Teodor. Now, Greg Serb in the corner of Teodor. The commissioner, Greg Serb, is talking with the corner of Teodor. They say that it was a butt that knocked Teodor down, not a punch. Tapa bounced in. And they're saying that it was a headbutt. And Teodor was knocked wobbly. We're being told from our truck that it was a right hand. We're going to take a look at it. Top is so awkward. Let's take a look, Daddy. You have to be alert at all times with Tapa and ready to punch when he comes in. And right there, the right hook coming in from the southpaw. Now, that's the most dangerous punch for any southpaw with an orthodox fighter because that's the punch the orthodox punch fighter is not used to seeing come from that angle, especially with the speed of Tapa. Clearly Tapa a punch. In. Yes, he jumped in with that right hook. Perfectly placed punch by Tapa. I had him down by three points on my card. But he gets the knockout. 2.09 of round number six, his 10th stoppage. That is the most dangerous punch for an orthodox fighter when he's facing a southpaw. That right hook. The orthodox fighter is not used to seeing that punch come from that availability of the monitors. He comes over, he makes sure. And there it is, no doubt about it. The right hook from the southpaw, the orthodox Tampa. The unorthodox. He was out cold. Boom, right hand perfectly placed. Teodor never saw that punch coming. It was a combination of the awkward style, the speed of Tapa, and the southpaw stand. When he opens six, but Tapa does close the deal with a perfectly placed right hook on the chin of Teodor, 209 of the last round. Tapa gets his 16th win. The main event still to come. Here's Brian and Max. Always sudden death in boxing. Suddenly, boom, all over. I'll figure out a way to get Pernell Whitaker in here. Remember the Whitaker-Nazario fight when Pernell became the first undisputed lightweight champ since Roberto Duran 12 years earlier? Similar knockdown, like almost a delay. He got hit, and then there was nothing holding him up. It just fell. First round. Time for to the max. Uh, max, uh, with yet another fighter popping off about a fifth weight division, please put in perspective for us the significance of modern-day three-division champs as compared to Fitzsimmons or Armstrong. I think he's talking about Oscar De La Hoya, yeah, which right. is a good point because Oscar's going after his fourth division, not his fifth. The WBO at 130 pounds against Breedall doesn't count. Shame on anyone.